I felt a small gush. I just remember thinking that it was all over, but I do have to say that walk to the ultrasound room, it was the longest walk of my entire life. I will never be able to explain the sense of relief in that moment. Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope y'all are doing super super duper well and today my friends I'm going to talk about my subchorionic hemorrhage experience. I laugh because the last time in the last video you guys saw me in I was very relieved and that was a very good representation of where I was at mentally then. I had just gone in for my 12 week appointment and I was anxious beyond belief. You guys saw me. I was so so scared and we went in everything was perfect and after that I felt like I could settle in I felt like I was ready to go and then BAM <laughs> Like, we can't catch a break. So this story might come as a surprise to you all, as well as a lot of people in my real life as well. Because to be honest, it was a very scary experience. And until recently, I hadn't really settled into the experience and the aftermath of it myself. And because I was still in the thick of it, I didn't want to scare any other pregnant mamas to be out there. But spoiler alert, I am okay. The baby is more than okay, and it turns out that's the case for a lot of subchorionic hemorrhage hematoma experiences. So I really want to share my own because the only thing that mentally got me through that first extremely scary ER experience was another IVF mama sharing her very similar experience to mine that I had only seen a few weeks prior to my own experience. So if I can, I would love to bring that comfort to somebody else who might need it. That being said, I'm still in the thick of my pregnancy and there are going to be people clicking on this video who are looking for comforting stories like mine. So if you have a more traumatic subchorionic hemorrhage hematoma experience, please respect that this is not the forum to share. I'm sure there are a lot of other forums out there for you to share your story, but please respect that boundary on this particular video. And the very last thing, I'm going to be going into some detail, including bleeding and that sort of thing. So if that is not something that you want to hear about, I totally understand and you can click off the video now. So the day was Friday. I was officially 12 weeks and two days pregnant and the day prior I had started spotting brown and it did scare me a little bit because I feel like nobody wants to see anything when they go to the bathroom when they are pregnant but I did have some brown spotting earlier on around six weeks and everything turned out okay there and my clinic reassured me that it's very normal especially since I had just had an ultrasound a couple days prior to that. But that Friday, it was the first beautiful mid 70s day and Jack and I had decided to go down to the beach and enjoy it a little bit and the vibes were just really good. Like I had mentioned before, hitting that 12 week mark, especially with the ultrasound that we had where baby was totally fine and everything just felt so good. I finally let myself start maybe thinking this could be real <laughs> and that everything was going to be okay. I even took a little bump photo at the beach because I wanted to remember their first time at the beach and it felt really fun to capture something like that. And I even started looking at strollers and configurations between travel systems and car seats and all of that stuff. I finally let myself start settling into those things and that's not something I had let myself do previous to this. If you're new clicking on this video and you want some more insight into my mentality with this pregnancy and everything it took to get to this pregnancy with our fertility journey, I'll leave that playlist link down below. But after the beach, I had noticed that the brown spotting started getting slightly heavier, so I definitely started paying more attention. Everything seemed fine when we went to bed that night, but about an hour after laying down, I felt a small gush. Thinking that it was just some more brown spotting, I went to the bathroom and there was just so much blood. As soon as I saw the color and the amount that was there, 
I think I went into some kind of shock and my memory does get a little hazy from here, but I do remember the important bits. I remember calling Jack in and telling him I think it is time to go to the ER because he was aware of the spotting that I had had throughout the previous day and into this day. I remember trying to clean myself up and get myself ready as soon as possible, but all I had were liners on hand and I do remember having to change those out a couple of times because I was bleeding through them. We had never been to the ER here, knock on wood, that is the first and the very last time that we'll have to go there. And there was a lot of construction, so it was a little bit stressful trying to find the right entrance or how to get to the right entrance. But Jack told me later that I was eerily calm during all of this, and that's not what I remember at all. It was probably because I was in absolute panic mode in my head. I remember thinking that this... I thought I was thought I was good to talk about this. <laughs> I thought I was good. I just remember thinking that it was all over and this was the other shoe that I was waiting for to drop. But I was also simultaneously holding on to that woman's story that I had seen just a few short weeks ago. That even though there's so much blood and everything looks so grim, everything could be completely fine. I remember holding those two things, the panic and the reassurance at the same level. It was very weird. I remember when we checked in, they asked me just a bunch of basic questions to like get my information into the computer. And then they said to wait in the waiting room and they would be with me when they had a bed ready. And I just know that my time judgment was probably very off this night, but it didn't feel like very long until somebody came to get us and let us into a room. On the way back to the room though, I do remember keeping my head and my gaze down because everything just felt so chaotic. There were just a lot of people and a lot of shoes, like I just saw a lot of shoes and noises and beeping. It was just not an environment that I wanted it to be in at all that night. They brought me into a private room that had a sliding glass door with like a curtain over it, but the curtain was slightly shorter than the whole door so I could see all of the shoes walking by and I could see if somebody was coming into the room or approaching the room. I remember focusing a lot on the shoes like walking by that night, but I later realized that not every patient got a room with a door. So I remember becoming super, super grateful for that because every time we had to leave the room, it was just very chaotic. And then every time I went back in my room, I was able to calm myself down a little bit because it just shut out a lot of the noise out there. We saw a lot of people that night between a few nurses, there was a resident doctor, there was the on-call doctor and like a couple admin people about paperwork and things. But I'll never forget my first nurse. She was such a calming presence. She was the first face that I saw. And she came in and asked me how I was. I told her I was not great. <laughs> but she brought me through exactly all of the tests and the ultrasounds that had been ordered for me and what they were for. And so that was really great to have that information. She would even come back and check in on me every 10 to 15 minutes to make sure that I was still doing okay physically, but also to give me an update on any of the tests that were coming back and any of the tests that were still waiting to be processed. I never once felt that anybody forgot about me or that I wasn't a priority or that I didn't matter, which is always my fear in medical situations when I'm panicking about myself and my baby and no one else seems to care, but that was just not the feeling at all. And so far everything was good. My blood levels were good. All of the things they were checking for on my side were good. And I think at that point we were just waiting for the ultrasound. And honestly, that's the only thing that mattered in my head. What felt like just a little while later, a woman came to get me for an ultrasound and she asked me if I needed a wheelchair and I actually felt okay to walk. One of the things that I didn't assess on myself when I first saw the blood at home home was if I was cramping or if I felt lightheaded at all, but I didn't. I didn't have those symptoms. And when I expressed that I didn't have those symptoms to the first nurse who had asked me how I was feeling physically, I remember her saying, okay, good. That's a good sign. That's really good. But I also want to pause here and say that since having this experience myself and looking up other women's stories, there are women who do experience cramping and they still ended up turning out totally fine and their baby is totally fine. So I don't want that to be a marker that somebody holds holds on in their head if they're experiencing those things because it still could be completely okay. Jack was allowed everywhere that I was going for my tests, which I was so 
grateful for. But I do have to say that walk to the ultrasound room, wherever it was, I feel like it was just winding endless hallways <laughs> to get there. It was the longest walk of my entire life. I wanted so badly to see that my baby was okay and to check up on baby and that's all that I was thinking about this entire night. But I was also more terrified than I had ever been about what the other possibility might be. And either way, at the end of this walk, I was going to find out. We started off with an abdominal ultrasound and they had turned the screen away from me as they usually do. But since Jack was standing next to me, I just remember staring at his masked face so really just this part of his face just to see any indication that baby was okay it seemed like forever that his face was just stoic and i saw his eyes darting between the screen and the tech just for him to try to read what was going on also and that's when i felt the room starting to cave in. And he looked at me and you could tell his eyes were smiling. And I frantically asked him if the baby was okay, if the baby was moving, if he saw a heartbeat. And again, he looked to the tech, but we both knew that the tech couldn't say anything. But he just smiled and he told me that the baby was doing flips in my belly. <laughs> I will never be able to explain the sense of relief in that moment. Jack later told me that we were in that ultrasound room for about an hour, but honestly to me it only felt like 20 minutes. I just remember that the tech took her time measuring everything under the sun. I just heard a lot of mouse moving, a lot of click clacking on the keyboard, a lot of like clicking and dragging, measuring everything. But at a certain point she said something like, you know, I can't tell you any details right now, but... And then she played the heart rate out loud and it was so beautiful and it was so strong and she had turned the screen at some point towards us so that we could see it and it measured just around 160 as it had been measuring for a while now after that we were led back to our room and a doctor had come in after they reviewed the images and they told us that we had a very healthy pregnancy on our hands and they also told us that they could find no trace of where the bleeding had come from there was no hematoma my cervix was very 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 close which is interesting because the woman I keep referencing on TikTok that had told her story the first time she had gone to the ER they also could not find any source of the bleed as well he told me to follow up with my OB on Monday who would have all of the records from tonight to see if she wanted to run any other tests or to do any other exams but after that after I got the AOK -okay, after the ultrasound after everything I could not wait to get out of this hospital we arrived at the ER that night at 11.30 p.m. and by the time we were walking back out to our car, it was around four o'clock in the morning. I personally continued to bleed brown for a couple weeks after that, which my OB did say was to be expected. But nearly exactly two weeks after that incident, I woke up in the morning to more red blood, although it was not nearly as much as last time. There was still no cramping and still no dizziness but because that color is terrifying to see at any point and I knew that there was still no known source of the bleed I called my OB's office and they scheduled me for an emergency ultrasound that same day the ultrasound was actually scheduled over at one of their partners offices which usually sees higher risk patients I think it's called MFM maternal fetal medicine or something like that although I was still a bundle of anxiety and nerves heading into this ultrasound sound I definitely had more hope this time and I was able to keep a lot more calm in my head this time given the experience I had two weeks prior this tech was the best also I don't know if they're just allowed to give more information at that office that I was at during the ultrasounds or if this tech specifically had more qualifications but she was talking to us through the entire ultrasound and this ultrasound actually had a monitor up so that we could see everything that she she was seeing and throughout the whole thing everything she was measuring everything she was seeing she was reassuring us that all she saw was a beautiful healthy bouncing baby and was that baby bouncing holy freaking Hannah I have like a gymnast on my hands you guys that thing is bouncing all the time <laughs> at the end she did explain to us that she saw a small subchorionic hematoma that was more than likely the source of the bleed and honestly that was more reassuring to hear than if she didn't find anything 
thing because we had just gone a few weeks without knowing any reason as to why these scary things were happening. It also gave my OB something to review and assure me that she wasn't concerned at all about, but that we would keep an eye out throughout this entire pregnancy. Almost exactly a week after that, I ended up bleeding again, but this time it was even less than the last bleed that I had. My OB's office gave me the cutoff of bleeding through one pad an hour as kind of the marker to give them a call. So we just made sure to keep an eye on it and I never even got close to that point. And that brings us to today. I wouldn't say that I'm 1000% out of the woods emotionally from these experiences because they were very scary, but I can confidently say that I've just become comfortable with what is normal for my pregnancy or this pregnancy specifically. And that is brown spotting and pads always, which can get a little uncomfortable, but hopefully that won't be for the entirety of the pregnancy. Something that has helped is I've actually trained myself to just not look at the toilet every time I go pee, which honestly has lifted a ton of worry from me because whatever will be, will be. And it's just normalized something that used to be so scary for me. I remember after that first bleed and even the second bleed, I could not go to the bathroom without Jack coming with me. Something else that helped me so much during this time were videos like these of other women sharing their experiences and also reading the comments under those videos of other women who had hemorrhages and their baby turned out completely okay. So if you've had a similar experience, please, please, please feel free to leave it down below if you feel comfortable to do so. Otherwise, now I feel like you all have a much fuller picture of what my first trimester entailed. Again, I felt like when I hit that 12 week mark, I felt myself emotionally just like on the up and up, ready to share a ton more stuff, ready to just dive into all of the baby products and all of this stuff. And then bam, we were just step back like 10 steps, but I'm in a better place now. I'm really excited. Oh, I'm like almost 18. No, how far along am I? I don't even know. I am almost 19 weeks and this is the little bean. Say hi. <laughs> but with that fuller picture that you guys now have of my first trimester, I'd love to share a first trimester recap for my next video. All of the symptoms, all of the versions, all of the cravings, literally everything. I've been writing stuff down as it came to me during the first trimester. And I'm at a point where I'm really excited to share those with you guys. So if there's anything else you want me to touch on for that first trimester recap, please leave those in the comments below as well. But otherwise, my friends, if you enjoyed today's video make sure to hit the subscribe button because I upload videos like these every single week all of my socials are linked down below including my Instagram which has some fun bump pics on it I love you all so 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 much and I will catch you in the next video I'll see you guys later bye